The Iowa Department of Transportation reopened the Avenue of the Saints just about 90 minutes ago after multiple incidents caused a major detour today. Here's a look at what happened. Late this morning, a semi-trailer hauling chocolate caught fire. During the firefight and cleanup, the westbound lanes had to be closed and traffic backed up for miles. Then another accident. This involved a tow truck with a crane that was called in to help haul away the burned semi. A man accused of fracturing an infant's ribs has pleaded guilty to two felony counts of child endangerment. 21-year-old Diario Cryer of Mason City is accused of squeezing the child to cause the rib fractures. The infant had to be taken to Mayo for treatment. Cryer pleaded guilty to child endangerment last week. No sentencing date has been set yet. A St. Paul police officer has resigned a month after a post that he made on Facebook urged drivers to run over Black Lives Matter protesters. The department says Sergeant Jeff Rothaker resigned effective immediately after apologizing earlier. In that post, he wrote, run them over, told people how to avoid being charged with a crime if they did hit somebody during the Martin Luther King Day march and rally on a bridge that links St. Paul and Minneapolis. Rochester Public Schools have been dealing with issues of racial disparity. Last night we showed you the highly attended school board meeting where there was a lot of discussion about the steps the district will be taking to address a federal investigation that found discriminatory practices in discipline of minority students. Tonight, KIMT News 3's Dee Dee Stephen is going more in-depth about that plan. She joins us live in Rochester. Well, sometimes it seems when you look around and see all of these that people have, it seems like Apple just rules the world. It's one of the most valuable companies in history, after all. But are they big enough to tell the government no? That's trending at 10. Well, if you follow trending items like we do, you probably saw this hashtag a few places today. It's National Best Friend Day. That's right. And Minnie, did you ever exchange best friend necklaces? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> No, no, just a, yeah. a, a nod and a, and a wave in the hallway is about yeah. the best we did. But we do want to be your BFF, so connect with us <laughs> online, Facebook and Twitter. You'll find us at KIMT News 3. First, though, tonight, breaking news. An Amber Alert was just issued moments ago in Iowa. Law enforcement looking for a 17-year-old girl who was abducted from the agency shelter in southeast Iowa. Right, Tyler, thank you very much. We also want to revisit our top story right now. An Amber Alert that was just issued about an hour, well, less than an hour ago in Iowa. Law enforcement are looking for a 17-year-old girl abducted from the agency shelter in southeast Iowa. This is KIMT News 3 at 5. The Powerball jackpot, maybe you've heard, it's higher than it's ever been in history. People all over our area and the country anxiously awaiting tonight's big drawing, hoping they become an instant billionaire. A look at all the excitement and all you need to know if you happen to be the winner. We are just hours away from finding out if somebody is going to become a very rich person. For tonight's drawing. We posted a poll on KIMT.com to gather some answers. We'll share the results of that poll in our 10 o'clock newscast. We'll also have some tips on what steps to take if you do win, or rather when I win, mm -hmm, coming up sure. a little bit later <laughs> in the show. We will have those winning numbers tonight during our 10 o'clock newscast. And we'll be updating you through an alert using our mobile app, so make sure you have that downloaded. Choose enable notifications to be sure you get that. The odds aren't quite one in a billion that you'll win a billion dollar Powerball jackpot tonight, but they might as well be. Still, many of us are all in to see the winning numbers, which we have for you in 20 seconds. Plus, a contested convention. It hasn't been seen in decades, but Republicans are getting ready for one this year. The latest twist in this year's race, KIMT News 3 at 10, starts right now. With no further ado, we don't want to waste any time. We've got your winning Powerball numbers right now. Get your tickets ready, and remember, this is for a world record $1.5 billion. Here are the winning numbers tonight. 4, 8, 19, 27, 34, with a Powerball of 10. We will be showing these again later in the show, never fear. Now, if you are one of the people tearing up your tickets in disgust right now, it may help to realize you're in the company of millions of others. In fact, we're not going to know until later tonight if anybody won the jackpot at all. And it's going to take several hours to find out if that winning ticket, if there is one, to find out where it was sold. Here's a Powerball number you might be interested in. Two billion. That's the estimated jackpot if nobody winds up winning tonight. And at such long odds, it is possible. Statistically, you're more likely to make it on an NFL roster than win the jackpot. Math teachers say the odds are tough to comprehend, so they can be easy to ignore. Now, we wanted to get a read of how local folks are reacting to the chance to be an instant billionaire. Here are the results of our poll on KIMT.com. 45% said they bought several tickets. 27% said they only bought one. 8% still planning on buying one when they took that poll earlier today. And only 20%, 2 in 10, were going Powerball free today.
The dismal start to 2016 on Wall Street got a lot worse today. Stocks tumbled again on fears of a global slowdown in falling oil prices. That officially sends the S&P 500 into a correction, or a drop of 10% from its peak. The Dow lost more than 300 points today. The eight-day drop is the worst start to a year in U.S. history. Well, it was this close to being an international crisis. Ten U.S. Navy sailors were detained in Iran when their boats drifted into Iranian waters. The sailors and vessels were both returned safely this morning after Iranian state TV showed video of one of the Americans apologizing. At the height of the incident, as Iranians were calling the military trespassers, Secretary of State John Kerry spoke by phone with the Iranian foreign minister. Kerry credits the past three years of nuclear negotiations with paving the way for quick diplomacy in this case. And that incident happened hours before President Obama delivered his final State of the Union address last night. It was an address local lawmakers responded to today. President Obama spent part of the speech asking lawmakers to work together. And Iowa Senator Charles Grassley is among those who felt he was sincere, but also felt some issues were overlooked, like a plan of action against ISIS. He adds there needs to be more done on economic issues, too. Well, the next few days will not be the time to be outside without shelter. We have severe cold on the way. Chief Meteorologist Tyler Roney is in the Storm Team 3 Forecast Center. Tyler, I feel bad talking about that right now because we had a really nice day today. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Hey, since you're still here, I guess that means uh, <laughs> you didn't win the jackpot tonight? I was going to say, we're still uh, sitting at our respective desks. I think we must have lost. We're both here. Okay, so that we're 0 for 2. 0 for we're 2. Just have, we're we're going to have to survey soon. everybody else now. <laughs> I'm glad you're still here, Tyler. No, I'm glad you're here, too. Thank you. Speaking of the Powerball, we will run those numbers again for you coming up in Trending at 10. Also tonight, even the president made a crack last night about Iowa's popularity this time every four years. Some relish that spotlight. Others eager for February 2nd to arrive. We'll see how the campaign provides a rare chance to be on national TV in Trending at 10. The snow on the ground might be melting, but it is still beginning to look a lot like Christmas. With creative Christmas lights, and that's especially true on one street in North Iowa. KIMT News 3's Allie Krug joins us live in Mason City with more. Allie? Well, obviously we're having trouble connecting with Allie, but what the good thing yes. about that was is we didn't need to hear her. That's an amazing just, display. It is an amazing display. Maybe we can get back to her in a little bit to We're hear more about to. that. We want to waste no time in bringing you the very latest numbers to see how you, your friends and neighbors are voting tonight in the race for president. Here are the latest numbers from caucus locations around the state of Minnesota with 20% of districts reporting it's Donald Trump in third, bucking the national trend. Marco Rubio out in front with 34%, followed closely by Ted Cruz with 30%. Now making up the lower tier, Ben Carson, John Kasich. Kasich's campaign issued an appeal for donations just before 8 o'clock tonight. That indicates he is not planning to go anywhere. Taking a look at the DFL side, Bernie Sanders made quite a push to garner support in Minnesota, and he nearly won Iowa. And look at this, with 9% of districts reporting, it's Sanders with a big lead, 60%. Hillary Clinton, 38 percent. We will be revisiting these numbers and getting some updates as they're still coming in. Well, there is a reason they call it Super Tuesday. It's not just the number of states holding votes tonight. It's the number of delegates to be awarded as well. 661 for the Republicans, 865 for Democrats on one day alone. And in Minnesota, it is not winner take all. So there can be multiple winners considered tonight. We have team coverage on the ground at two caucus locations. We are in Austin with the DFL. KIMT News 3's Brand Tabak is there. Raquel Hellman is in Rochester where Republicans caucus tonight. We will begin with her. Raquel, what's the mood like this evening? It's the future. Matt? Sure, this is about uh, much more than just the presidential nominating process. Yes, thank you, Raquel. So 38 delegates at stake for Republicans in Minnesota. Meanwhile, 77 delegates for DFLers in the state. Mower County voters are helping to distribute those delegates, and that's where KIMT News 3's Brian Tabak is standing by live. Brian, what are you seeing so far? Hillary Clinton set out to prove today that it is never too late to gather votes. She toured Minneapolis, dropping in on a coffee shop in the Midtown Global Market, urging Minnesotans to go caucus for her. Marco Rubio held larger events in the Twin Cities for the same reason. He reminded voters that the last time Minnesotans went for an outspoken celebrity, they elected Jesse Ventura governor. So far, it appears that they are listening. We'll toss it back to you. I gotta warm up because this could be a long night for the guys wearing green. Don't go just yet. Forgive us, AJ, but is that a basketball injury? What happened? Did you uh, take an elbow? 
That is an injury. Nine stitches on a Sunday afternoon in the ER. Don't do Boy. it. You are so lucky. All right. I'm, I'm glad, glad you're able to play tonight. Yeah. Have, like, oh, have that's fun. That's what I was worried about most. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. See you in a bit. The game between the Generals and the Globetrotters tips off at 7. I'm excited. I'm going to be there tonight. You're going to be yeah, there? I'm going to head out that way. Have fun. Take some pictures for yeah. me. I'll be working hard. And uh, we do want everybody to head on out and cheer on our guys. AJ's playing for the Generals. I think the Generals are due. You know, they need a victory. Remember all kinds of different words. Did I say yes? You did wonderful. That is not me singing. <laughs> but we know Matt can sing. You were actually hearing from a local dentist. He's using his vocal cords to help ease some worries. We're going to have Matt sing later on, maybe tonight at Den. Nobody wants that. <laughs> maybe he'll sing some opera, or maybe, maybe. Even that will sing some uh, I tell you what, having way. him sing over my face is yeah. a heck of a lot better than having me do the singing. <laughs> you know, maybe that'll You can be, agree yeah. with that. She's I'm trying to be nice. You're being nice. Yeah. <laughs> First tonight, a developing story between Mason City and Clear Lake. Authorities, including the State Patrol, were on a chase after a vehicle did not stop on Highway 122. This happened just minutes ago. This chase has now come to an end. We do have a report. And Tyrone Wilson of Postville was caught in Rock Island, Illinois. Police believe he robbed a bank in Calmer on Tuesday. He was taken into custody without any issues. But before he was caught, police had asked for help from the public in finding the suspect. And they were called to investigate a man in Rochester. KIMT News 3's Dee Dee Stephen was there as police figured out it was actually a case of mistaken identity. And she joined us live in Rochester tonight with the story. And call then to be sorry. All right. Good advice. Thank you, Dee Dee. We'll hear from witnesses to all this tonight at 10. Thank you very much, Adam. We want to revisit our top story tonight of a chase between Clear Lake and Mason City. We have a look at a truck that was stopped by police tonight. This is just west of Mason City. Every business owner, of course, does everything they can to attract customers, but one local bait shop is really hoping to reel you in as you drive by. For years, Crazy Minnow Company's owner has been looking for propane tanks to put in front of his shop. They're decorated then to look like bobbers. Efficient. No doubt about that. He says he's hoping even though summer is over and things slow down a bit, he's hoping the new bobbers can reel in some ice anglers come winter time. Not just decorations, though. They're yeah. useful if you're going after a great white shark. Yeah. <laughs> Put those babies in the water, see what yeah. happens. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You'll know if you call. Yeah. I think we all kind of dream about when we're playing on the Nerf hoop at growing up that we'll play college <laughs> basketball. Yeah. Take somebody else yeah. to actually do that dream. I can't even, it. I can't dream that well. <laughs> <laughs> your dreams aren't that good either. I knew there was no chance. <laughs> no chance. Well, we're going to have some rainfall tomorrow. It'll, All right. Nice. I can, I'll dream of that. There we go. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>